1998, he was released from isolation. Still kept in the same cell for the next six years, but allowed to spend some time outside the cell. There have been many campaigns for his release. His brother Mayo started the Venunu campaign in London. The founder of Amnesty International, Peter Benenson, was on the board of the trustees, along with Bruce Kent, Harold Pinter, and Julie Christie, amongst others. Peter Benenson later ex <coughs> expressed dissatisfaction that Amnesty had not done enough to secure Mordecai's freedom. Many other important names from the worlds of politics, show business, and the media are amongst his supporters. <coughs> Bono dedicated a song to Mordecai in a concert in 1986. Books have been written, films and documentaries made about his story, but the Israelis made him serve his sentence to the last day and still refused to let him leave. He was released from prison on the 21st of April 2004. The Israelis keep, kept and still keep him there under emergency laws of the British mandate. The reason given is that he still has secrets to tell. This has no basis in truth as the information that Mordecai leaked is now very out of date and useless. In 2009, Uzi Elam, a retired army brigadier general who ran the Israeli Atomic Energy Commission between 76 and 86, said anything that Vanunu might disclose about Demona <coughs> is of little relevance. I've always believed he should be let go, he said. These restrictions forbidding him to leave the country or speak to foreigners have been renewed each year since then and will be renewed again next April unless there is a change of heart by the Israeli government. On the 11th of October this year, the Supreme, the Supreme Court flatly rejected his fifth appeal against the restrictions. As in many other cases, the Supreme Court showed their lack of independence and gave judgment according to the wishes of the secret services. After his release, he lived for six years in Palestinian East Jerusalem. <coughs> he was, and still is, under constant surveillance, and the police can pick him up or harass him at any time. His emails and telephone conversations are monitored. In May of this year, he was returned to prison for three months for speaking to foreign journalists. Since his release, he is living in, a one, in one small room in Tel Aviv. His life is one of isolation unable to find work or have normal friendships. He passes his time walking, swimming and surfing the net. The issue of nuclear weapons in the Middle East cannot be emphasised enough. So many good people say the only solution to peace is a nuclear-free Middle East. Mordecai acted with great risk to his life in order to warn of <coughs> nuclear danger. If the international community, specifically the US and Britain, had stood by their declared values, which are against the proliferation of nuclear weapons, and their stand on international human rights, he would have been free a long time ago. He has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize every year since his kidnapping. He was recently awarded his 14th Peace Prize, the Karl von Ossietzky Peace Medal for Courage. Mairead and I went to Israel to meet him on his release from prison in 2004 and have had the privilege of getting to know him well on visits to East Jerusalem. Our impressions of this remarkable man are that through all the privations, disappointments and cruelty of the last 24 years, he has remained strong and dignified, never once showing self-pity, determined that his spirit will not be broken. He has the heart of a lion and nerves of steel. His stubborn nature has held him in good stead. If he were here tonight, he would be talking to everyone, asking their name and where they come from, flirting with the women. He loves life and will live it to the full when he is free. He loves parties, is a great dancer, he's good company, very funny, with a mischievous sense of humour of a small boy. He enjoys good food and wine. He loves classical music. His favourite opera is Madame Butterfly. He has a disarming smile and a twinkle in his eye. He's very perceptive and intelligent. He misses nothing. The internet revolution went on when he, when he was still in prison, but he took to technology like a duck to water on his release and has the latest Apple and iPhone. You can find him on Facebook. 
All he wants now is to be allowed to leave Israel and live a normal life which is impossible for him in Israel. To travel the world and see all the places he has dreamed about over the last 24 years. He sends his best wishes to all his supporters and thanks you for all the work you have done on his behalf. He hopes to be here in Dublin to have a drink with you very soon. Thank you. fear of contradiction that that's probably one of the most stimulating, diverse, engaging, uh, inspiring panel discussions that I've been lucky to, to, to witness for a long time. We've had uh, uh, power in politics, history and human rights, um, the possibility, the boundless possibility of love conquering hate, uh, demand to recognize our collective humanity, to act, to walk together, to fight injustice wherever we see it. An extraordinary commitment to non-violence in the context of a conversation about an issue where violence seems to be the only thing that people actually want to talk about or where violence is used as an excuse for further violence and barbarity. I found it a quite extraordinary evening. And to end, hearing a voice tonight and having a man whose, whose humanity is, there's been such an attempt to wipe out Mordecai's humanity so that nobody recognises that we're talking about a fellow man, another human being here. To have him come into the room so powerfully and, and to have him in our presence, I think, has been really inspiring. So thank you very much indeed, Barbara. At this point, we have an opportunity to open it up to you. So I think they've done an extraordinary job. Now you need to do one. So we have some time for conversation. Not as much as we might have planned, perhaps, but I think, to be honest with you, it was important that all of our speakers uh, and give us uh, all of their insights and perspectives. So we'll take some questions. Please, ah, I was going to say, please don't delay to raise your hands. There was nothing. <laughs>